Amen. We are in a three-part series, uh, Hope in the Dark. And when I started this, I'm like, well, God, really? This time of the year? You know, it, this, this is not usually what you would call a Christmas season message, but God has over and over again shown me that it is. Last Sunday, if you wasn't here, there was uh, some people that left here touched mightily. Amen? And because it's timing. If you've ever lost anybody that's real, means so much to you, and you lose them, holiday season is always the hardest. When you go through the Christmas seasons, through the uh, different seasons, Thanksgiving and, and Valentine's, and uh, usually any day that ends with a Y. And the church said, amen. We're in Habakkuk, we're in, it's a three, um, it's a three chapter book in the Bible and it's, Habakkuk was um, one of the 12 minor prophets and he actually lived 600 years BC before the birth of Christ. And most prophets, they always spoke to the people on the behalf of God, but Habakkuk wasn't. He's the one that spoke to God on the behalf of the people. And in chapter one, uh, Habakkuk, we found Habakkuk crying out to God, why God? Anybody ever question God? Why God? And so in chapter one, we found him wondering, wondering why. In chapter two, last week, we found him in a place where uh, he was waiting. You ever been in that waiting place in your life? You're waiting on God, you're waiting on something. And then he comes off and he says, though it linger." Wait for it. Somebody say, wait for it. Wait for Though it lingers, wait for it. In other words, if it's, if it's not God's time and you can't force it, oh. amen, and, and if it is God's time, you can't stop it. And, and that's the fact. Look at your neighbor and say, that's Bible. Amen. But in chapter 3, we're going to kind of change the tone here. And Habakkuk 2 and 20 says this, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Then we get to chapter 3. It suggests maybe a, a reset. How many of you ever had to reset your phone because it didn't work right? Yeah. Or your computer or, you know, if you own an Apple, you understand. You have had to reset it once or twice. Amen? And Habakkuk 3 and 1 says a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, on Shiganoth. Shiganoth. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a Shiganoth day. I'm not asking you to cuss, okay? Shiganoth. Somebody say Shiganoth. Shiganoth. It's okay. Shiganoth, right? Say it like you really mean it. So what, what, what does Shiganoth mean? Amen? That, that's what we got to know. Actually, that's a musical term. It's a Hebrew word. Chicken off, it would be like, okay, Julie, we're going to sing this song, but we're going to sing it as a love song to God. Uh, actually, no, Julie, I'll tell you what. Let, let's don't sing it as a love song. Let's sing this. Let's jazz it up. Let's put a little soul in it. Come on, put a little, put a little ump in it there, Julie. Don't, 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 don't make us cry. This ain't a, a tear in your beer song. Y'all with me? Shiganoth actually means it is a term used of a soulful song. Have you ever sung a song that touches your heart? Amen. Have you ever just had that song that, I mean, for anybody else, they'd walk past it and hear it and say, oh, that's pretty good. For you, it has you on the floor crying. Come on, that, that one that touches you all the way to the core. Y'all with me today? Mmm. Say it's a little music, it's a little uh, uh, music term that's used to how a song should be sung and how it should be done. Here we find Habakkuk, he's in a bad place and, and he just found out that God made him a promise. But it wasn't a promise that he wanted to hear. He said, I'm going to raise up your enemies, Habakkuk. He's like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I'm praying for victory. 
And you're telling me that you're going to cause my enemies to have judgment over me? In other words, you're not doing what I want you to do, God. But nevertheless, I'm going to sing from my soul. That was his prayer. Chapter 1 left me wondering. Chapter 2 left me waiting. It don't matter what comes my way. I'm going to praise you from my soul. 3 and 2 says, Lord, I have learned, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe at your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day, in our time. Make them known in wrath. Remember mercy. God, I've seen your work. How many in here can say, I've seen your work, God? I've seen your work, God. If you have not seen God's work, look straight ahead. Here's God's work. If you have not seen his work, look straight ahead. This is God's work. Y'all with me? I'm a living testimony that either should have been in the grave or I should have been in jail. Amen? Or actually, let's say it even better. I should have been in jail or hell. But because of the grace of God, somebody said grace, it's the grace of God. I've seen your work, God. I've seen your mighty powers and your things that you have done. Now I'm going to ask you to do it again. Somebody say it with me. Do it again. Do it again. So if you're taking notes when you're in a valley, always remember the goodness of God. Verse 3. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and his praise filled the earth. Taman and Paran were the two places God took his people for refuge after delivering them out of Egypt. Hey, remember? Remember? So Habakkuk says, you know what? No matter what my circumstances look like, I'm always going to remember your mighty acts. Y'all with me? I'm always going to remember what you did. I remember when you delivered us out of the hand of Pharaoh that your mighty power caused to, to change the heart of Pharaoh. Y'all with me? I will always remember that when we got to the Red Sea, you parted it so we could walk on dry ground. I remember when we got to the other side and we were hungry, you sent manna from heaven to feed us. And when we couldn't get manna from heaven, you sent a raven to feed us. When we were thirsty, you brought water out of a rock. I'll never forget, God, that the fact that you called dry bones to come back to life again. I'll never forget your mighty acts. Somebody said, don't forget. Always remember. Let me say, remember. Even when what he's doing in your life is not what you want. Here, Habakkuk a prophet of God is crying out because it don't look good. Y'all with me? It looks bleak. And God just made him a promise that I'm going to do something that's going to amaze you. I'm going to cause your enemies to rise up against you. Is that what you want to hear from God? No. I'm so glad you're here today. Verse 4. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. Plague went before him. Pestilence followed his steps. He stood and he shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. Habakkuk continues to remember all God did. Sometimes we got to remember. I remember a time when God told me to that it's time for me to lead a Bible study. And I couldn't read. What? No, I didn't. No. I remember a time when I was so broke I couldn't afford to pay attention. Didn't have two nickels to rub together. And he paid my light bill. Supernatural. 
I remember after one year of saying surrendering to tithing that he paid all my debts off. Amen. I remember all the people that I prayed for that he healed. Somebody say, remember. Remember. You did it before. Guess what? I know you can do it again. I know you did it then, but you're well able to do it again. Somebody say, do it again. Do it again. Amen. Woo. Part one is remember. But the second part is to embrace. Mm. This morning, as I was studying and getting ready for service, I've always had this infatuation with eagles. Always. I've always had, have a not anybody that knows me a long time. I used to have an office that was slammed full of eagles. Everywhere you looked was eagles. I had eagles on top of eagles because I love eagles. And all through the Bible, he talks about eagles. And when I did all, a lot of extensive search on eagles and, and why he used eagles, and he tells us that we'll soar as an eagle, and, and, you know, and, and if we won't grow weary and faint. <laughs> and y'all with me? And this morning, as I'm watching for Bambi to come out, this big old bird swoop down in my yard. I said, what is that? That's a, a th first I thought it was a buzzard. I'm going to be honest with you. And um, I said, no, that's a red-tailed hawk. So I get my scope, and I'm looking through it, you know, and I said, wait a minute. That's an eagle in my yard. I said, but wait a minute. He ain't brown and don't have a white head. So I'm going, I'm Googling now. We're going to find out something here. We're going to find it's an adolescent bird. It's still a juvenile. But nevertheless, it's still an American bald eagle in my yard. And it kind of reminds me of what Habakkuk is going through here. If you know a lot about eagles, see, eagles have seven different lenses over their eyes. They're the only predator that can look directly into the sun and, and fly into it. When something gets after them, they can go straight to the sun. You know what? We have that ability. When something gets after us, we can go straight to the sun. Amen? And, and their, their talents are so powerful and so mighty that it destroys everything that it, that it grabs a hold of. And that one today, he had about a six-foot wingspan. I say, it was a big old bird coming out. I'm like, man, that's a monster. Something about an eagle, and, and that's why I had to go do a little more research this morning. Uh, an eagle later in life molts. They don't molt young in life like most birds. They, the later in life, they, they molt. They lose all their feathers. For that season of time, they're vulnerable to everything that they are prey to. They become prey. Although they still have the power in their talents, even though they still have the lenses over their eyes and that they have the ability to soar and fly and be able to see fish and be able to see a mouse from a mile away, they still one of the most revered animals on the planet. At that moment, they're vulnerable because they're molting. And I would have to say that's kind of sometimes God puts us in that place, but if they don't ever molt, they don't become mature. Sometimes we got to molt in order to become mature. And everybody said. So some of the stuff that you're going through, it's nothing but for your maturity. James tells us in the book of James, count it all joy, my brother. When you go through the diverse temptations and, and trials and tests in life, for let patience have its perfect work in you. So the maturing of the saints. Y'all say amen. So, so Habakkuk is here. He's going, God, I don't understand. There's things that's happened in my life. I don't understand why they happened. God, why did you allow it? Instead of changing 
and resetting and reprogramming my thinking of God, what are you going to do with this? Because your word says that you'll take what the devil meant for destruction and gain your glory for it. What is it that I'm learning through this? Why am I? Listen, we stay in a holding pattern way too long sometimes because we don't learn the lesson. And everybody said, if not, if we, if we get out of it, we go right back to it because we didn't learn the lesson. Amen? In other words, Habakkuk saying, and number two, he says, I have to embrace. I have to embrace what's going on here. Habakkuk's name means to wrestle with or embrace. That's what his main name means in the, in the Hebrew. Even though I'm going to wrestle with some of the ideas and some of the things that God lets me go through, I'm still going to embrace God. And everybody said, even if I'm looking at trials in the face, I'm still going to trust God. Amen? No matter what, I'm going to trust God. Look at your name and say, I trust God. Verse 16 says, I heard and my heart pounded. It wasn't that kind of pounding, you know, like when you see a beautiful woman. I love it when the, the husbands always look at their wife. <laughs> I love that. It's the kind of, my, my, my heart was pounding because of the, of, the, of the words that you spoke to me, God, that you're going to raise up my enemies. And I heard, my ears heard, and, and my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones, and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet, somebody say yet, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will be joyful in, my, in God, my Savior. He says, even though it may get brutal, even though life may not go the way I had planned it, even though things may not have happened the way I want them to happen, I'm still going to praise God. I'm still going to believe you no matter what it looks like in my circumstances around me. I, I, I've been asked this question uh, many times, are you pre-tribulationist or are you post-tribulationist? And I always say, I don't know. I'm a grace tribulationist. I don't know. Because, you know, it's not clear. If you find it clear in the Bible, please, let's sit down and have a Bible study on it. Because, I mean, one thing says one thing and one says another. So it's not really clear. Uh, are we going to be here when the rapture comes? Uh, or, or, or tribulation comes? Or are we going out with the rapture? I don't know. I can't tell you, but I do believe that I, whatever the case may be, God will give us the grace, the believers that will, that will follow him and trust him. No matter what it looks like around you that will truly trust him, he'll give you the grace to go through it. And everybody said, in other words, I'm going to, I, I, look, I, I may pray for somebody and they're still sick, but I'm still going to praise the Lord. Y'all with me? Maybe my marriage is a mess right now, but I'm still going to praise the Lord. Maybe my kids are not acting right right now, but I'm going to continue to praise the Lord. Maybe I got up this morning, my body didn't want to work like it ought to, but I'm going to continue to praise the Lord. Right now, my money may look funny, but I'm going to keep on praising the Lord. It don't matter what. Mm -mm. What I prayed for, I didn't get. I'm still going to praise the Lord. I got up and had a flat tire. Praise the Lord. I got three good ones. Yeah. Man, even though, Habakkuk says, even though it may get bad, there's probably going to be some bloodshed. There's going to be some people that lose their life. Even though it gets bad, there's going to be some hurting people. Children are going to suffer through this. But I'm going to praise the Lord. I could find dozens of reasons why not to serve God. Dozens of reasons if I want to be selfish. And everybody said, but I've, I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to serve God and I'm still going to praise him no matter what. 
Somebody ought to go on and give him praise right now. <laughs> Habakkuk, he, 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 he wrestled with what God had told him, but he still embraced the word of God over his circumstances. Amen? I mean, maybe you got something going on in your body and it's not working like it should. Are you going to embrace healing? Or are you going to embrace, even, listen, life is not fair. Look at your neighbor and say, life is not fair. Let me explain something to you. If you're young, take plenty of pictures. Things change. Hallelujah. I mean, that'd be like a doctor telling somebody my age, put a Band-Aid on where it hurts. I have to have a mighty big Band-Aid. Y'all with me? And everybody said, amen. But I, listen, I'm going to embrace God's word. For by his stripes, I am healed. For by his stripes, I was healed. I'm going to embrace his word. The redeemed should say so if you're redeemed. I'm going to, re I'm going to embrace his word. Once a junkie, always a junkie. Ah, the one the sun says free is always free. free. Amen. The one the sun says free. Listen. I will embrace his word above my circumstances. Embrace his word above this, this world that we live in. Listen, there's many, many reasons why. Well, I can't serve God. I go to that church over there, and that preacher, he's long-winded. I ain't got time for all that long-winded stuff. And then they got them. I ain't even got started yet. I'll get on my notes in a minute. Y'all with me? I'm going to serve God no matter what. No matter what. The enemy had his chance. He should have killed me when I OD'd in that rest area in Gainesville, uh, Florida. He should have killed me. He had his chance. I gave him everything to work with. But guess what? You didn't shut my mouth up then. You sure ain't shutting it up now. I don't care what goes on. Not today. I'm going to embrace his word. I'm going to embrace his word. Joy is mine, saith the Lord. Peace is mine, saith the Lord. See, Habakkuk had to, re had to remember some things. He had to remember them little three Hebrew boys, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, when they were in the fiery furnace. Y'all with me today? Some of y'all, y'all New Testament church don't understand the Old Testament, but that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were, they were thrown in there. Guess what? A fourth person popped up. There's been times I've been in the fire and came out never smelling like smoke. Why? Somebody carried me through. There, there's been some dark hours in my day that God has had to carry me through. Y'all would, would not understand. He had to remember that, that God himself bound the jaws of a lion and caused him to be able to snuggle up with Daniel in the, in the den. Some of y'all been in some lion's dens that should have killed you. But God said, no, not today. See, we got to remember the good things that God has done. Somebody say, good thing. Good thing. See, Shiganoth isn't a half-hearted song to God. It's songs from my soul. Sometimes people wonder why we praise as long as we do at our church. Some people say, well, you could have your shorter service if you cut off about five or six of them songs that y'all do. I think we need to add five or six. I say, I think we need to add five or six. See, see the devil, listen, listen, let me, let me give you a little word of, word of warning. I, I've seen this 20 plus years pastor now, boy, God to get somebody on fire for him, and man, they come in, they all excited, boy, they all up here in the front with their hands raised. Matter of fact, let me explain something to you. Y'all welcome to get out of your chairs and come down here in the front if you want to worship. It's okay. It, it, it is all right. But boy, I can tell when they go through a trial. Because their hands go from this to this. From this to this. And then they go from this to see you. Because you don't forgot the goodness that he had done. Okay? God didn't heal my wife here on earth, but she was healed in heaven. She didn't leave here with cancer. 
cancer wasn't loud in heaven because it didn't come from heaven. Y'all with me today? But I have to remember when I dealt down off of my couch and, and withdrawals at 6,008 Willow Road when God, when I said, God, if you're real, he showed up and he took a, a meth addict and made a preacher out of him. I, and you still able? Show up! Do it again, God! And everybody said, not, not a half-hearted song to God. Not a half hearted song to God. If the whole church, listen, I, I, I can also tell when somebody's going through something that's a believer. They won't wait for the praise team to coach them in. They will run you over. To... Not today, devil. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I got a shaking off in me today. I, and I got to shake it off, and I got to get this shaking off in me. I got to get my God some hearted praise down so deep. Praise the one that delivered me, the one that set me free, the one that's going to carry me through this situation. That God, I got to praise. I got to give him praise no matter what's going on. I trust your word, God. I trust your word above my circumstances. Woo. Can I tell you something? You're going to give him a shaking off before you see the provision. Somebody say shaking off. I think I know y'all think that's a cuss word, but it's not, I promise you. <laughs> Woo. Woo what is that? <laughs> we need some shaking off faith up in this place. What is that? That's worshiping God even when you hadn't seen it yet. That, that's, that's a praise that, that is beyond yourself. That takes selfishness off the table and puts your soul before God. So listen to me. We all get tired. Y'all with me? I said, we all get tired. We all get tired. Somebody say, we all get tired. Sometimes we just got to cry from our heart. And everybody said, mm -hmm. See, last week during the service, I saw somebody that was struggling to embrace some things in their life. And I'm going to be honest with you. As long as you live, there's going to be struggles in life. I, I, I don't preach a gospel that if you believe God, everything's going to go away. Because life's going to happen. But when you'll set your sights on his word, clench your teeth in and say, not the day, devil, no matter what's going on in my life, I'm going to trust him. And guess what? I can't wait for Sunday to come because I got a shaking off that I got to shake off. I got some stuff I got to get. Mm -mm. Woo. I'm going to give you a couple of words from a song here. It says, no matter what I'm going through, I will lift my hands while I'm waiting. Yes. Louder than my fears, I will sing. May my heart ever be reminded, you are good. You are good. You are good. Habakkuk finds himself in a place that he's not seeing the resolve that he wanted. But he starts to realize that I got to make the best of a bad situation. And it's even deeper than that because he's sitting there going, you know what? Even though there's no going to be no provision, there's no grapes on the vine, it's not good. But I will say this, the Lord is in his temple. Habakkuk 3.19, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the height. And everybody said, I don't know about you, but I enjoy it when I'm having a mountaintop experience, when everything's going good. And it seems like everywhere I turn, I'm getting blessed, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And, and boy, I mean, I, it's easy to shout his praise from the rooftop when you, when you drive up and somebody says, guess what? I'm going to go buy you a brand new car today. I mean, hey, it's easy to praise God then, right? It's, it's easy to praise God when somebody says, hey, I want to pay all your bills off. But a church ought to be shouting about right now. <laughs> mm. 
it's easy to shout when you get the report that you've been healed of something. It's easy to, it's easy to shout from the rooftop when everything's going the way we want it. But can I tell you something? It's in the valley where you grow. That's where you grow. That's where you mature. And everybody says, we, we, we learn to trust him in the valley because it don't feel good. And sometimes it even gets to a place where we're going, I ain't got nowhere to look but up. And everybody said, uh, see, in chapter one, we talked about don't walk away. Chapter two, we talked about don't quit on God. But can I tell you something? You won't have a chapter three faith without the wondering of chapter one and the waiting of chapter two. You won't have that chapter three faith. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's a God that loves you so much. So much. I don't care where you've been, how far you have fallen, no matter how far you've strayed away from God's word. And, and listen, I'm not one of them got to give you a little list of rules. I, I, I mean, I have. I've been to church. Well, if you're fornicating, you're going to hell. Then the old carburetor preacher will get out and he'll get to popping them off, boy. Can I tell you something? You don't need a list of rules. The Bible says that right and wrong is written on the tablets of our heart. We know right and we know wrong. It doesn't matter how far you've gone from God. I, I don't know that I can sit here and say that and brag by no means on anything Mark has ever done. But the greatest decision I ever made in my entire life was when I come to myself in the hog pen in withdrawals on my couch. And I said, God, if you're real, I need you now. If not, I got to get up out of this place. And guess what? He showed up. But it only happened when I got real with him. When, when I said, you know what, I can't do it anymore. I, I can't handle it no more. I, I, I can't do life. See, I always thought I had life handled, and I, I always thought I could handle and manage life with no problems. I got this. I mean, it's not a big deal. Need more money? Work harder. Amen? And, and money will buy anything. Just work harder. Work more hours. Do what you got to do. Then I found out I can't do it without him. Then I found out that, you know what, there's... Everybody in this place was created from something. And his name was Elohim. The creator of all things created you and me. When he said to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let's, let, let's make man in our image and in our likeness. Guess what? Some of that stuff you've been wrestling with is the Holy Spirit trying to work on you. I, I mean, some people, well, you can't hear the Holy Spirit, you ain't saved. That's a lie. I remember getting in trouble, and the first thing out of my mouth, something told me I shouldn't have went there. <laughs> Come on, y'all with me. <laughs> and why? Wow, that was the Holy Spirit then. Can I tell you something? God's in the house today. And it's for somebody to hear today that he loves you so much. You may be going through a trial. You may be going through a test. You may be going through something that, that devastates you right now. But can I tell you something? He loves you. Holidays may, may be coming, and all these emotions may be running wild and, and crazy in your mind and in your heart. Can I tell you something? He's our confidant. He is our counselor when we call upon his name. If you will today, stand to your feet, and each and every one of us, we're gonna, I, I want every head bowed and every eye closed for a moment. As we allow God to speak into our heart. If you're here today and, and you don't know that you know that you know that you know. You don't understand some things. Maybe you're wrestling with something. It's okay. It's okay that you've questioned God. God sent his messenger today to tell you. In order to have that chapter 3 faith. You're going to go through the waiting. You're going to go through the wondering. 
But more than that, he sent his son so that we can spend eternity in heaven with him. <clears throat> if you're here today and you're not sure of your eternity, you would like to change that and not wonder. Maybe one time you've you called his, on his name and you've strayed far away from him. Maybe you've never called upon his name. Maybe you've been undecided. If that's you today and you would like to make that right, would you raise your hand? that's you today maybe today you want to make that recommitment to God today I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior pastor I want that tenacity to believe God the way you do it's available but you got to embrace his word even though you may wrestle with some of the things in life can I tell you, you don't have to do it alone. If that's you today, I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith this morning. If you'll step out and come down here, let me pray with you this morning. Come. And don't be ashamed. He said, you'll be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. Come. I see more hands than this, y'all. Come. Take a step down. Hallelujah. Heaven's waiting. Heaven's calling this morning. Don't leave the way you come today. Come. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. That you change us not. That you are God. And you are God all by yourself. And for that, we're grateful. We thank you. You said, for whosoever shall believe upon me shall be saved. I'm going to ask those that are knelt down here if you'll stand this morning and pray with me. I want every person in this place this morning to pray, pray aloud. I don't want nobody praying by themselves. Say these words with me. Say, Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm ready to do it your way. Jesus, move into my heart. Change my life. Holy Spirit, I invite you to lead me to guide me and direct me. I receive by faith my salvation. If you prayed that from your heart, the Lord says that you are saved and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if one enters the kingdom of heaven, the Bible says that there's a party going on in heaven. So here at Life Spring Church, y'all give God some praise this morning. Give him some praise this morning. Somebody go ahead and praise him.